Good afternoon. My name is Rolanda Mason. I'm a navigator at Minnesota Legal Aid's Project CARE. Thank you for joining us today. Um, this is part of our monthly uh, Facebook Live presentation series called Because Your Health Matters. And each month we spend a few minutes with you talking about some aspect of healthcare eligibility and enrollment. And for those of you who've been with us over the last couple of months, you'll know that we've been really focusing on the renewal season. Uh, this is something that we haven't needed to pay much attention to or think about for the last couple of years because renewals were suspended. But now DHS has announced that they are resuming renewals for all people who en are enrolled in either medical assistance or Minnesota care. The last two presentations we've done have really focused on the medical assistance renewals. We talked um, a couple months ago about what you need to know to be ready for renewals and what those renewals were going to look like and how you were going to get them and what you were going to need to do to complete those. And then last month we ch chatted a little bit about potential outcomes, things that could result from those renewals and what people might need to do to make sure that their coverage continues if they are no longer eligible for the program that they're currently enrolled in. If you missed either one of those presentations and you want to go back and look at them, they're available here on our Facebook page. So we invite you to, to check those out. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing on Minnesota care renewals uh, and what people need to be thinking about in this renewal season as we are, as we're moving forward. I'm going to, um, talk to you about a couple of different things today. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. And when we get to the end, I will try to answer all of the questions that come in. I'm just going to be cautioning you not to put anything in the chat that is overly personal. Uh, whatever you post here, everybody's going to be able to see. So uh, pose your questions in as generic a way as possible. And if you do need to talk to somebody about your individual situation in a way that uh, you need to disclose private information, don't do that here. Give us a call and we'll be happy to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. All right, but for now, let's get started on Minnesota care renewals. So generally speaking, Minnesota, all people who are enrolled in Minnesota care will have their renewal at the end of the year. Uh, they'll get their renewal paperwork in probably in early November, um, maybe the end of October, they'll be completing that. Uh, to determine whether they are going to be eligible for Minnesota care in 2024. Uh, that's the normal time. And for those of you who may have been on Minnesota care for, you know, before the pandemic and before renewals were temporarily suspended, you will remember that that's the time of year that everybody on Minnesota care does their renewals. But sometimes families actually have to do more than one renewal. And those are families that have uh, where there are some people in the in the household that are on Minnesota care, while there are other people who might be enrolled in the medical assistance program. So not everybody in the family has to be enrolled in the same program. Everybody's eligibility is determined separately. And because there are different income limits for uh, children, pregnant people, uh, people over the age of 65, those kinds of things, uh, we can sometimes see situations where some people in the household are enrolled in medical assistance while others are enrolled in Minnesota care. And if you happen to be in a household where that is true, then you may very well need to do two renewals during the year. Um, your, your household, will, because renewals are done as a household. So when it is time for your household to be renewed, everybody in your household will go through that same renewal. And by household, we're really talking about not necessarily just the people you live with, but all of the people who are part of your medical assistance or Minnesota care case. Um, when it's time for someone in your household to have to do a renewal, everybody will be renewed. So people who are on medical assistance uh, will have to complete their medical assistance renewal. And at that time, Minnesota care enrollees will also have their eligibility for Minnesota care reevaluated. And if as a result of that medical assistance renewal, it is determined that the Minnesota care enrollees are no longer eligible for Minnesota care, then their Minnesota care would end. But if as a result of that medical assistance renewal, it is determined that those Minnesota care enrollees continue to be eligible for Minnesota care, then they will stay on Minnesota care 
until it's time for them to do their Minnesota care renewal at the end of the year. And at that time, they would need to do a second renewal to determine whether or not they continue to can continue to receive Minnesota care in 2024. So the reason for this is because there's a federal law that says that people who were on medical assistance uh, as of March of 2020, in March of 2023, cannot lose their Minnesota care or their medical assistance coverage until their next medical assistance renewal. And because households are, have to go through this process all together, that medical assistance renewal date becomes an important date for everybody in the household. And, and if the people on medical assistance can't have information that would threaten their elig continued eligibility for medical assistance evaluated, then neither can the Minnesota care folks. So if there's somebody in your household who's on medical assistance and you're on Minnesota care, then you're eligibility is going to be protected until that medical assistance renewal is done. So let's let's look at that in a little more detail. So let's take let's take one example. We have a family and it's mom and dad and two kids and um, mom and dad are on Minnesota care and the children are both eligible for medical assistance. So if if the children have a medical assistance renewal that is due in let's say August, of this year, then they will get the, the family will get the renewal paperwork in the mail. They will need to complete that renewal. They will be looking to see whether the children remain eligible for medical assistance, but they will also at the same time be looking to see whether mom and dad remain eligible for Minnesota care. And if mom and dad are not eligible for Minnesota care as a result of that renewal, then their Minnesota care eligibility will be terminated and they will move to whatever is the new appropriate health care coverage for them at that time. But if mom and dad remain eligible for Minnesota care as a result of that renewal, they'll stay on Minnesota care. And then at the end of the year, when it comes time for everybody on Minnesota care's annual renewal, they'll get renewal paperwork again. And they'll need to do that renewal again to determine their Minnesota care eligibility going into 2024. Um, medical assistant, <clears throat> excuse me, medical assistance recipients are the ones who are guaranteed continued eligibility until their next renewal. That same protection does not extend to Minnesota care folks. So when the agency receives information that they no longer qualify, then their Minnesota care can end. That is why someone whose medical assistance renewal is processed can lose their Minnesota care eligibility even before the, uh, the Minnesota care renewal uh, date comes. Um, but if you're a family where everybody in your family is on Minnesota care, so in this case, let's say it's mom and dad and they have a young adult child and everybody in that household is on Minnesota care, then they will not have a medical assistance renewal. Their Minnesota care renewal will be due uh, at the end of the year and a determination would be made as to whether or not they are going to be eligible for Minnesota care into 2024. So they would only have one renewal that they would need to do. Renewal forms, whether we're talking medical assistance renewals uh, or whether we're talking uh, Minnesota care renewals, are going to be mailed out to households at their the current address that they have on file with the agency. And they're going to be <coughs> excuse me, mailed in an envelope with a big blue dot on the front. So we know that when you're on medical assistance or Minnesota care, you get a lot of mail from the agency. And sometimes it's hard to, to stay on top of it all. And, and, and it's easy to sort of set that envelope aside and not open it up um, because it, you know, it, it feels like maybe it's not gonna be that important. But if there's a blue dot on that envelope, it means your renewal forms are inside. And you do wanna open that up and you wanna complete those renewals because if you don't complete your renewal by the deadline, then you could lose coverage. And that would be true for Minnesota Care folks who have to do a medical assistance renewal for other household members if that MA renewal isn't done, then the Minnesota care folks could lose coverage as well. So it's important that, um, that you watch for the blue dot, uh, get those renewal forms when, you, when they come to you in the mail and um, make sure that you get them completed and returned to the agency by the due date that's on the form. <laughs> A couple of other things I wanna talk about real quickly today are, are some other changes or rules that 
pertain to Minnesota care eligibility. Uh, these are a couple of things that have just been um, passed by the Minnesota legislature. Uh, the first, and, and they're both really good news. So if you're on Minnesota care, uh, and if you've been on Minnesota care during the public health emergency, you continue to have premiums assessed in, in many cases, uh, monthly premiums that were due and owing for your Minnesota care coverage. Even though during the pandemic, DHS was not terminating people's eligibility for failure to pay their premium, the premiums were still being billed. And so people who weren't paying those premiums were basically uh, racking up a lot of unpaid premium bills. And every month when you got your, your invoice for your Minnesota care premium, it would show the total amount of unpaid premiums that you still owed for. The Minnesota legislature just last month passed a bill that said that DHS is going to cancel all unpaid premiums that accrued during the public health emergency. So if you have unpaid Minnesota care premiums that are due and owing from the time period that we were under the public health emergency, those premiums have been forgiven and you will not have to pay those. And then the other piece of news is, is sort of linked to that, and that is a waiver of all Minnesota care premiums going forward. So from May of this year, this month, through June of next year, uh, Minnesota care is going to be premium free, which means no one who's enrolled in Minnesota care is going to be asked to pay a premium uh, from now until January of 2024. If you paid your premium for May, or if you've already paid your premium for June and you're on Minnesota Care, DHS will be issuing a refund of those premium amounts, provided that the total amount that, that you have paid in for those two months is more than $5, then you'll get a refund of what you've paid. If it's less than $5, then they will just simply credit it to your account against future premiums that you may owe after June, June of 2024. But, um, but premiums that um, totals that go over $5 will be refunded uh, for May and for June, if you've already paid them. <clears throat> so as I said in the beginning, uh, I'm a part of a group of navigators. Uh, we call ourselves Project Care. We are a team of Minsure certified navigators that are available to provide help to people in the community, either apply for coverage or to help to complete your renewal. Um, this is our team. You can see you can see the folks here who are part of our Project Care Navigator team. Uh, everyone is a Minsure sort of a navigator. Uh, most of our staff are bilingual, and so we are able to provide direct assistance to people in their preferred language in sm uh, Spanish, Somali, and Vietnamese, Chinese. Uh, if you someone needs assistance in another language, then we would provide an interpreter for that. All of our services are available free of charge. And we can meet with you either by, by appointment, either in person, by phone, or by video. And if you want to contact us to schedule an appointment, um, this is how you reach us. Um, we are located in St. Cloud, and this is our phone number and our email address. You can contact us and set up an appointment. Uh, we have navigators available at all of these locations that you see on your screen. And so if you uh, if there's another location other than St. Cloud that works better for you, we can arrange to have you meet with a navigator there. Uh, or, as I said, we also do phone and video appointments. Um, we also will see people on a walk in basis, uh, but only to the extent that we don't we have that our navigators are not already meeting with someone uh, through an appointment. So in our St. Cloud office, it's fairly easy to get to be seen on a walk in basis. In the other locations, our navigators are really there for scheduled appointments, and so it might be harder. Uh, it's a little riskier to just show up and hope that somebody's going to be available to see you on a walk-in basis, but you're certainly welcome welcome to try that um, if, if that would work out for you. So um, I'm going to, that kind of concludes the information that I wanted to, to share with you today about Minnesota care renewals. We'll be talking a little more about those renewals as we get closer to the end of the year, uh, when we know everybody on Minnesota Care will be going through renewals. The big thing that we just wanted you to know today was the possibility that if there are medical assistance um, enrollees in your household, you may still need to do a medical assistance renewal before your Minnesota Care renewal. 
uh, and also I uh, wanted to share with you the good news about the forgiveness of Minnesota past due Minnesota care premiums incurred during the pandemic and the waiver, uh, the temporary waiver of premiums going forward. I'm happy to answer any questions. If anybody has any, I see one has come in on the chat, but if you have other ones, uh, please feel free to, to, to put those in. Um, the question I see here is somebody wanted to know about those premiums. They said that they had paid their premium um, over the last year, their Minnesota care premium over the last year, and they wanna know now that that amount has been forgiven, will they get a refund of those premiums? And the answer unfortunately is no. Uh, Minnesota Care will not be refunding premiums that people pay during the pandemic. Uh, they just won't be pursuing collection of unpaid premiums. If however, you paid your premium for this month or you've already paid your premium for next month, those premiums will be suspended or will be refunded, but only premiums for May and June of 2023. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so somebody's asking about if their child's medical assistance renewal is at is scheduled for after their Minnesota Care renewal, um, will they lose their Minnesota Care eligibility at the time of the Minnesota Care uh, renewal? And the answer to that is no, um, because the medical assistance recipient in that household is guaranteed coverage until their medical assistance renewal, then DHS and, and the counties cannot act on any adverse information that would jeopardize those, the MA um, people's eligibility uh, for anybody in the household. So if the result of, of the Minnesota care renewal would also make those children ineligible for medical assistance or those other household members ineligible for medical assistance, then DHS would just have to, to waive or not implement those adverse actions. However, I know this gets really complicated. If the reason the Minnesota care family person would lose their Minnesota care eligibility is for a reason that would not affect the medical assistance recipient's eligibility for medical assistance, then the agency can implement that change and that Minnesota care person could lose their eligibility. So let's just dig into that a little deeper to see what kind of what I'm talking about. So let's say that the Minnesota, the Minnesota care renewal comes up and the family gets their Minnesota care renewal. They complete their renewal. And as a part of that renewal, they uh, indicate that um, one of the people in the household, one of the adults in the household has gotten a new job and that person's employer now offers uh, affordable health insurance as, a, as an employee benefit. That would make those adults ineligible for Minnesota care, but it wouldn't have an effect on the eligibility of those children for medical assistance. So because it's an, it is an adverse action, but it is an adverse action that would not negatively impact the MA enrollees, Minnesota Care will implement that change, and those adults could would lose their Minnesota Care eligibility, and would be then evaluated for other types of eligibility that might be available to them at that time. But contrast that with somebody who it same situation, but now the reason that the family would lose their their Minnesota Care eligibility is because their income has gone up, and they are over the Minnesota Care limit for a family of their size. Uh, if that change is implemented against everybody in the household and the result of that change is that those children would lose their medical assistance eligibility, then that change would not be implemented against anyone at that time. They cannot implement a change that adversely affects the medical assistance recipients until the medical assistance renewal. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I, I know this is really confusing and everybody's situation is gonna be a little different. So that's why, again, I would invite you if you have questions about that, if your own circumstances um, are, are you know, confusing or hard, 
and you're not sure what's going to happen, reach out to us. Our navigators are available to talk with you about your individual situation, uh, understand um, you know, what, what your scenario is, talk to you about what is likely to happen as a result of your renewal, and then help you through that renewal process, including um, whatever is the result of that renewal and if there are any additional steps that you need to take to make sure that you remain covered under some program, even if it's not the one that you're currently on. And again, I, I, I would just remind everybody that navigator services are free of charge. So anything that our navigators can do to help you, uh, there is no charge to you for that assistance. So please feel free to reach out, call us, schedule your appointment. Uh, like I said, we'll see, we, you can come in and meet with a navigator in person. You can meet with a, you can do a, a, a video phone call or just a standard phone call with a navigator uh, and um, they'll answer your questions and help you through the process when it's time to do the process. Any other questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we'll be back here again uh, on June 14th at three o'clock when there will be the next installment of our presentation series. And we look forward to seeing you then. Meanwhile, if you know of anyone who would uh, be interested in this presentation in either Spanish or Somali, uh, we will be presenting um, the, our Spanish version at, uh, and our Somali version here on our Facebook page next Wednesday. And then if anyone would be interested in hearing this in Vietnamese, uh, we'll be presenting this, um, this presentation in Vietnamese two weeks from today. So um, thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Have a good day.